Ladies and gentlemen, there exists a profound threat to our nation today. It's not military war and it's not terrorists. It's none of these outside forces. What I'm speaking of is PC, that is, political correctness. It's a philosophy that at first seemed to begin innocently enough. The idea was to be careful not to offend others. At first it seemed altruistic and good, but then the movement took a wrong turn, and tragically that wrong turn can and will ultimately lead to our destruction. You need to know more about this subject, so stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, America was founded on the principle of free speech. Citizens could criticize wrongs that they saw in society. However, a new kind of speech and new policies have evolved in our nation. It's called political correctness, and it is corrupting our freedom to say what is actually true. Consider a few examples of how far this philosophy has taken us. The Athens Banner Herald wrote this. Organizers of a St. Patrick's Day parade in Georgia refused to allow a local youth group to carry a cross in their parade because it might be too controversial. Based on the concept of not offending others, we're losing our freedom of expression. And if this continues, politically correct speech will ultimately change America's history. Political correct speech and the educational system is having an enormous effect on the minds of U.S. students. For example, the University of California Faculty Training Guide states the following. Phrases such as America is the land of opportunity and America is a melting pot are microaggressions that could leave some students feeling discriminated against. One bizarre political case went beyond belief. An ABC News broadcast described the shocking story, and they stated this. The Department of Justice alleged that the chairman of the local Democratic Party, Ike Brown, and local election officials disenfranchised whites by rejecting their absentee ballots and telling voters to choose candidates according to race. And yet another example, in his book, Certifiably Insane, Tom Reedy records 19 perverse examples of political speech. Consider just a few that he reveals there. A professor at Ball State University was recently banned from mentioning the concept of intelligent design because it would violate academic integrity. Chaplains in the U.S. military are forced to perform gay marriages even if it goes against their personal religious beliefs. The governor of California signed a bill allowing transgendered students the right to use whichever bathrooms they prefer. Further, they could join either the boys or girls sports teams. In San Francisco, authorities have installed small plastic privacy screens on library computers so sex addicts can continue to exercise their right to watch pornography at the library. An entire high school track team was disqualified earlier this year because when crossing the line, one of the runners made a gesture thanking God. 
According to a new Army manual, U.S. soldiers are now instructed to avoid any criticism of pedophilia, rape, or any other perversion that Islamists might perform. According to the Equal Oppor Employment Opportunity Commission, it's now illegal for employees to discriminate against criminals because it has a disproportionate impact on minorities. Now, as crazy as all these things sound, vast numbers of people are climbing on the PC bandwagon, and it has influenced others to remain silent on issues that are of enormous importance. The blatant truth is that it is leading us to losing our freedom of speech. Yes, words like sensitivity and diversity have made intolerance a sin. This trend is stripping America of its common sense and our God-given values and principles. We've forgotten that it was the, these principles of freedom of speech, for instance, that created America. They made our nation the greatest in the world. However, the new speak is changing all that. It's blinding us to what is really happening. Professor Alan Bloom taught at Columbia, Yale, and Yale. He watched as students began to change over time, and he wrote in the book Closing of the American Mind this. The average college student in the last 50 years has been brainwashed to accept the notions that truth is relative. Absolutism is therefore wrong, and that the only real virtue is open-mindedness and tolerance. Again, in Robert Bork's book, Slouching Towards Gomorrah, he wrote the following. Universities are subjecting students to diversity training. As they are bullied, intimidated, or even coerced into avoiding language that's deemed insensitive to feminists, homosexuals, and others who fully intend to silence all opposition to their anti-Christian behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, these insightful men make it very clear. We're raising a new generation, and that generation is being programmed, programmed by political correctness to accept a new and different set of standards. Students are being indoctrinated with principles that ultimately undermine the very youths who have come to accept them. Further, these new social rules are ultimately weakening the values that made America great. In a recent Gallup poll, it showed that only 24% of Americans think that we're on the right track as a nation. Of course, most citizens are concerned with the economy, but the issue goes much deeper. It is our culture that's going wrong. It's become violent, sexually saturated, and divided. For example, Pe uh, Peggy Noonan wrote in the Wall Street Journal, a tourist is beaten in Baltimore. Young people surrounding him, they laugh. He's pummeled, stripped, and robbed. No one helps. They're too busy taping it on their smartphones. That's how we heard their laughter. The videos on YouTube, along with the latest McDonald's beatdown and the latest store surveillance tapes of flash mobs, that is, groups of teenagers swarm into stores, rob everything they can, and run out. The phenomena is on the rise across the country, and police now have a nickname for it, flash robs. Our young people are losing the knowledge of right and wrong. The adverse impact of this influence cannot be overstated. The new speak is aimed directly at removing godly values, and the result is that today people question if there is a truth, one that's absolute and certain. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to know if there's an absolute truth that defines a way to either success or failure. Perhaps most important, if there is abs absolute truth, how can we find it? How can we know that truth? Ladies and gentlemen, there does exist absolute right and wrong. Just as there are absolute laws of physics, mathematics, and laws of nature, there is truth that can lead to happiness, freedom, and success. And more importantly, you can find that truth, and it will provide sound principles of living for you. These principles are found in a book called the Bible. And if you've not yet read God's Instruction Manual for Mankind, you need to look inside and see what it actually says. 
Don't believe what men say about the Bible. Don't believe their namby-pamby, nicey-nice, sugar-coated preaching regarding the Bible. Find out for yourselves. Read God's book and understand its principles for happiness. It is a vital message regarding the future of our nation. It's in there. Read it. Today, we'd like to offer you the free booklet titled, Read the Book. Our booklet will inspire you to read the Bible. It will help you understand God's message, revealing the source of our problems and what you can do to remain safe in this ever-changing world. So stay tuned, and at the end of our program, we'll show you how you can order your free copy of our booklet titled, Read the Book. Ladies and gentlemen, so far we've seen that our nation is changing and changing for the worse. Vast numbers of people have lost their sense of right and wrong. They're rejecting the eternal principles recorded in the Bible. And, and these principles were the foundation upon which America was built. Instead, they're now turning to from the truth into lies. For example, in 1962, the Supreme Court ruled against God. They outlawed public prayer in schools. The result has been that our society has embarked on a moral freefall. We now call evil good. We've turned common sense on its head. We have legalized evil and criminalized good. This foolish trend finally began to be exposed in 1996. At that time, the Kansas State Legislature opened with prayer, asking a pastor, Joe Wright, to perform the invocation. Joe Wright clearly spoke the truth regarding what we have done, and he exposed where political correctness has taken us. In this famous prayer, Pastor Wright said this, Heavenly Father, we come before you today to ask your forgiveness and to ask your direction and guidance. We know your word says woe to those who call evil good, and that's exactly what we've done. We've lost our spiritual equilibrium. We've inverted our values. We've confessed that we've ridiculed the absolute truth of your word in the name of moral pluralism. We have endorsed perversion and called it alternative lifestyle. We have exploited the poor and called it a lottery. We've neglected the needy and called it self-preservation. We've rewarded laziness and called it welfare. Father, in the name of choice, we've killed the unborn. We have neglected to discipline our children and called it building esteem. We've abused power and called it political savvy. We've coveted our neighbor's possessions and called it taxes. We've polluted the air with profanity and pornography and called it freedom of expression. We've ridiculed the time-honored values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search us, O God, he said. Know our hearts today. Try us and show us any wickedness in us and then cleanse us from every sin and set us free. Guide and bless these men and women who have been sent here by the people of Kansas and who have been ordained by you to govern this great state. Grant them your wisdom to rule and may their decisions direct us to the center of your will. Well, as you might expect, the response to Wright's prayer was shocking. At the end, three politicians jumped to their microphones protesting. He can't talk like that about us. They called his message gross, derisive, and overbearing. But it was all too true. As a nation, we have now come to call wrong right. We fear offending others even if they do evil. Notice the words of God that Wright quoted. In Isaiah 5 and verse 20 through 21, God says this, Woe to them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. But this is exactly what we have done. We don't want to offend transgendered people. We don't want to offend criminals who commit horrible acts. We don't want to offend radical Muslim terrorists. The only people we don't fear to offend today are Christians. The result is that many people no longer respect or observe God's principles for living. Honest and noble, respectable leaders are disappearing. This same subterfuge was going on in the time of King David and his government. Notice David's prayer. 
Help, Lord, for the godly man ceases, for the faithful fall from among the children of men. They speak vanity, every one with his neighbor. With flattering lips and with a double heart do they speak. The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips and the tongue that speaks proud things, who have said, with our tongue we will prevail, our lips are our own. Who's Lord over us? Yes, David had to deal with the lies of his day, and we're forced to deal with them in our age. Because we've not resisted this trend in our society today, we've undergone enormous change. Society has evolved to a point that we're hostile to what is righteous. God prophesied that this would occur in the last days, and it has happened. Our leaders say they want to serve the nation, but they hide the truth so that they can serve themselves. As Isaiah also prophesied, none calleth for justice, nor any pleads for truth. They trust rather in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and they bring forth iniquity. That's what we do. Political correctness makes God's truth appear as intolerance. But why shouldn't we be intolerant of evil, of drugs, of murder, of stealing, of terrorist attacks. Of course we should be. But because we tolerate evil, the Almighty warns us this in Isaiah 30. Now go and write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not to us right things, speak to us smooth things, prophesy deceits, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. You and I need to honestly look at the direction in which we're headed. Universities have now influenced nearly three generations of Americans. They've taught that absolute truth does not exist, that diversity is all important, and that we should accept other cultures, principles, and values as equal to our own. Most young students are inexperienced. They're not prepared to evaluate false ideologies, even if some might discern the truth and they think the, pro the professor's wrong, they're forced to shut up. They know they'll get poor grades or be kicked out of class if they speak up and tell the truth. But those who do tell the truth are accused of bashing others. The result is obvious. More and more people fear to stand up for what is right. It was the same way in Rome during Paul's time. But God's apostle was not ashamed of the truth. And he powerfully wrote in Romans 1, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it's written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold or suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So they are without excuse because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the man, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust toward one another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, 
covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do they do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul is describing Rome, but we have become a modern Rome today. The culture back then failed them. And the more our culture becomes like theirs, it too will certainly fail. Right now, our government, our corporations, our schools, and the mainstream media deluge us with subtle messages. Those messages are specifically designed to intimidate people. It pressures them to use approved language and approved behavior. The result is that we are constantly informed of what we should believe. We're being told what constitute appropriate speech. It has become so powerful that the effects of political correctness have even impacted the religious community. Many no longer study the Bible. And church has become more of a social event instead of a place to correct ourselves from sin. Prayer is no longer considered a, our daily tether to the great almighty God. But instead it's become a nice thing to say after some tragedy occurs. Religious television programs often speak of a health and wealth gospel. And this movement towards political correctness has led many churches to fear identifying and condemning sin for what it really is. And by succumbing to this, we're actually creating the prophesied end time events that are bound to happen. And we're doing so in our tolerance. We're letting our enemies build nuclear weapons. We're letting China destroy our economy. We're going down the same path ancient nations have gone. America has passed our golden age and we're in steep decline now. In this context, consider Christ's words. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. The gospel of the kingdom is to be preached as a witness. And that word witness is a legal term used as evidence in a trial. It means to indict those who did not keep God's laws. And most people no longer keep the Ten Commandments. In these last days, the churches shrink back from preaching God's plain truth. But this we must not do. The scriptures condemn abortion. They condemn the greed of merchants. They condemn the government's lying to the public. They condemn the church for its apathy. They condemn the lust of pornography and they condemn idolatry. They condemn drunkenness and drugs. They condemn anger filled hatred towards any decent people that might want to speak out. But it must be understood that God does not condemn such things because he doesn't want us to have fun. It's to warn humanity that such sins will result in our own destruction. He wants to save us from that. However, tragically, it seems we would rather be blind. And so we condemn those who call it like it is. We think we're good by not offending anyone, yet we refuse to publicly condemn that which God condemns. And the truth is that we need to powerfully preach and powerfully teach against those things that are evil. As Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 4, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they'll turn away their ears from the truth and be turned to fables, but watch you in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist and make full proof of your ministry. 
Ladies and gentlemen, be certain of this. I'm not saying that we should cause offense to others. Our speech is to be seasoned with grace. We're to speak the truth in love, but we are to speak the truth, not fear what others think of us. We are to love our enemies. We're to avoid purposefully causing offense to others. We're not to mistreat or be unkind to those in error. We should not give them cause to sin, but we are not to condone the current political correctness that sugarcoats what is obviously evil. Speaking the truth does not mean making personal accusations. It does not give us permission to gossip. It does not give us permission to spread animosity. It's not our job to judge or condemn other individuals. However, it is the job of God's church and God's people to condemn wrong. It's the very nature of God to address error openly and publicly. Notice God's words in Proverbs 17. He that justifies the wicked and he that condemns the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. We need to do what God commands us to do, and that means we must not straddle the fence. God's truth is absolute. As it says in Matthew 12, Christ said, he who is not with me is against me. He who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to know the truth. You need to know what we are doing to ourselves. You need to know how to escape the coming disasters that will occur as a result of our political correctness. And you can know the answers to these things. There is a truth and there is error. There is right and there is wrong, just like the laws of physics, mathematics, and the laws of nature. More importantly, you can find the truth that is based on sound principles and that lead to either success or failure. Those are written in the Bible, but few actually read the Bible. If you have not yet read God's instruction manual for mankind, you really need to take a look inside and see what it actually says. Today we'd like to offer you the free booklet titled Read the Book. Our booklet will inspire you to read the Bible. It'll help you understand its message and the true source of the world's problems. Moreover, it will reveal what you can do to remain safe in this ever-changing and dangerous world. So stay tuned, and we will show you how you can order your free copy of the booklet titled, Read the Book. Now for all of us, thanks for watching. If you would like the literature offered on this program, please contact Quest for Truth, P.O. Box 80248, Billings, Montana, zip code 59108, or email us at witness at eternalcog.org.